Hey guys, it's Yulia. You probably don't know this about me, but I'm a huge Wheel of Time fan. So I'm going to paint a scene from the books and review season two of the Wheel of Time. Let's do it. For this particular painting, I wanted to draw her Emmons Field 5, sharing a happy moment early on in this series. It's not exactly a specific moment from the books. It's more a little fan service moment, but I thought it was fun to kind of capture some of that early series innocence, especially with Rand, Egwene, Matt, Perrin, Nynaeve, just acting like themselves and having a really nice moment around a campfire. Okay, time for the review. To preface, I generally liked season one, except for the entirety of the mess of the last episode. <laughs> I liked a lot of the casting choices. I liked the actors. I saw the plot lines they were trying to set up, and you can see some of that in season two. I also have liked seeing what people thought about each episode in the various different communities online. Um, that was one of my favorite parts about the season, kind of getting to see people's opinions, both book readers and non-book readers. And the non-book readers' opinions opinions and kind of speculation was actually my favorite to read through because then you kind of get to relive you know the series through their eyes. I saw a lot of people complain that some of the costuming and the color choices felt you know too bright or like too clean but I actually like that. I don't really like the all you know dark grayscale Game of Thrones type fantasy books so the bright color choices actually really worked for me and helped you know, immerse in the world and make it feel more livable and more real. Overall, I thought season one was about a 6.7 out of 10. I know they really struggled with the departure of Barney Harris as well as COVID restrictions, so I'll give them a little grace for that. I think just skipping over what happened at the end of season one is the way to go. Like, not even acknowledging Loyal getting stabbed or Nynaeve getting brought back to life. Didn't happen. It's fine. So we are where we should be at the start of season two, which is a couple months ahead of where season one ended. So what I liked, I thought that the girls' storylines were all really well done. I liked the Gwen, Nynaeve, then we got introductions to Elaine and Avienda. I liked their introductions and I thought those worked for the consolidated medium. Egwene is clearly the showrunner's favorite, but Madeline Madden's acting, I thought really elevated her storyline. And I'm really looking forward to seeing her progression through her plot line and kind of being more explicitly told that she's really leveled up in terms of her use of the one power through the Demone training. Nynaeve's accepted test was also great and very well done. I did not remember what happened in the books, so I definitely got faked out in the third arch. I also thought it was a great way to showcase that the Aes Sedai don't know everything like they claim to. Nynaeve's interactions with Rima were also great, and I'm really looking forward to seeing her growth. I've seen a lot of complaints that she was nerfed <laughs> this season, but I think that tracks. I think it gives her a lot of room for growth since she can't channel anytime she wants, especially in a time of greatest need where she's trying to protect her loved ones and she's powerless. I think that really is frustrating for her as much as it's frustrating for the show watchers and book readers. In terms of the show itself, I really thought season two stepped up even more in terms of sets, costuming, and lighting. It really makes me want to live in their world. Like for example, Moraine's room in Varen's house or Moraine's little outfit for walking about Kyrian. I think this is a pretty widely shared thought, but the Forsaken are very well done in the show, and I actually think they're done better in the show than in the books. We get a lot more nuance and gray areas to the characters rather than just more like cartoony villain bad guys. For example, I really like that Leandrin seared through Nynaeve's ropes before handing her over to the Sanchan. Like, just because they're dark friends does not mean they're all working toward the same goals. You know, they all have their own motivations and kind of giving a little haha like to Zeroth and giving Nynaeve a chance to Escape. I thought that was really a nice touch. The dark friend interactions are also a lot of fun. There's a lot of lore to pick up on through their conversations and they're all acted very well. So that was actually like a really big highlight of the show for me. I loved Lanfear's futuristic outfits. Like she's a chosen one. She better dress like it. Also her portrayal of using the one power is great. Moraine's doing, you know, this whole elaborate dance routine to open a wave gate and Lanfear's just like, Ew. And it's done. <laughs> like, love that. That was such a great touch. And my predictions, I said I didn't want to see a lot of Rand Celine interactions, but 
I'll take my words back on that. I definitely enjoyed those interactions quite a bit in the show. I also liked seeing a little bit more of Moraine's family life. We don't get any of that in the books. Her interaction with Anvir were very well done. And I think her trying not to lie about Barthana's sandwiches was also quite funny. And I maybe mild spoiler alert, a little, little prediction here, but I think Anvir is going to be merged with Colavir Saigon's plotline. Tell me what you think about that. Next, Perrin and Elias. I thought we're done about as well as you could in a visual format. I think merging Huron and Elias really worked for the adaptation to consolidate some characters. I don't mind how they've depicted the visuals of the wolf senses. I think the wolves talking directly to Perrin would have been hard to convey in like a not weird comical way. So having the little visual senses, I think makes sense. Hopefully this means down the line, it will make Aaron's relationships easier to bear since he won't just be smelling everyone's emotions at all times, even with they're, you know, saying one thing, but feeling another. For Perrin's plotline, I think killing Daddy Bornhold with an ax really, it's totally justified. Um, Hopper is the best boy. I couldn't even watch that last scene in episode eight. I liked how Matt was redeemed in the season finale. I think it will be very interesting to see how they handle his later progression. So this brings us to Rand, good old Randy. I'll touch a little bit on his arc and what I want to see more of. But overall, just seeing more Rand would have been nice. I think that the dragon banner thing at the end was very well done. I just imagined all the screenwriters, you know, in a room together and they're just trying to think so hard about how to make a fight in the sky over an entire city look good. So I like that it still fulfilled the prophecies and it looked cool. That's about as much as you can ask for. As a whole, there are much more positives this season than negatives, but let's dive into a little bit what I didn't like. So we got the Dark Friend Social to open the season. Yay! But I don't know if I like the part with the child and the Trolloc. Ugh, I don't know. I will see if I like it better in a rewatch. Next was Lan and Moraine just beefing and not communicating. I mean, I guess that is one part that they kept from the books is characters not communicating well. I get that she was trying to drive him away, but it just didn't sit well with me. Especially since it dragged basically the whole season. Like, I really could have used that time with Moraine teaching Rand politics or Lan and Rand spending time together working on sword forms. So I'd be really curious to see what non-book readers thought about this plotline. Similarly, Moraine just one v wanting a fade with a dagger in episode one did not sit well with me. <laughs> I think something that the show struggled with is conveying power levels. For example, Moraine being able to just torpedo the Shan Chan ships at the last episode from like a mile away didn't phase her, but her bringing down the inn in the very first episode of season one just like made her extremely weak and tired. I don't know, like what's, what's the power level there? Or Egwene being able to hold a shield for so long against a Shamael. She's a young channeler. Like, what is her actual power level compared to the top, top channelers of the Forsaken and the Chosen who have had, you know, 3,000 years to work on their craft? And to kind of close my loop in my previous thought, I thought that the Rand and Shamel battle, battle was just okay. Rand just kind of like shuffles over and like, just like pokes him with the power and real hair and marked sword. A little anticlimactic, if you ask me. And lastly, for my dislikes, I didn't like Min's arc almost at all. I don't think she's a dark friend and she did have that cool scene with a Shamael in the dream world, but it just kind of fell a little bit flat for me. Um, although I do think that the show is giving her more room for growth since in the book, she kind of stays static in terms of her development. So we'll see what they do with her in later seasons. And fair disclaimer here min is also the only miss for me in terms of characterization and mannerisms so that might be clouding my judgment a little bit in that regard okay that brings me to what i want more of i really wish we would have gotten more time with Nynaeve and Egwene as novices like i just want one power hogwarts that's all i want just Give me like a full season of them just like learning weaves and having fun, you know, or having, you know, doing chores as novices in the tower. A little more life in the tower would have been a lot of fun to see. I like the small bits of humor that they wove into the story and I want more of that. 
For example, Egwene, you know, struggling to sit on the cushion with Alana or all of Matt's commentary. I think that was very well done and the humor landed really well and kind of really lightened up a lot of the really dark and pessimistic situations. In addition, I want more of the Forsaken interacting with each other. I think that was set up well in the finale. So I'm really looking forward to meeting the other six and having them all work toward their own goals. I did think it was important to see Rand as inexperienced in terms of channeling, but I could have used a, a little bit more from him in terms of maybe breaking out from a shield under Swan or in episode eight. Just give me more, more from Rand, you know? He's supposed to be the strongest channeler alive. And I'm not getting those vibes from him quite yet. But I just want more of Rand learning the one power and having more character-defining moments and more wins. I really want to see more of Daystamar. They had Rand burn the invitation, which I thought was great. But I'm hoping we'll get a lot more of that next season when Tom's actor returns or maybe in the Queen Morgay's Camelon plotline. So a little more scheming, a little bit more politicking is always fun to see on screen. Similarly, we got a little bit of Varen plotting and some brown shenanigans. And last, but certainly not least, I need more of Rand in the red coat. So as a whole, I thought season two was a massive step up in writing from season one. You could see bits of foreshadowing being dropped, plot lines, you know, merging and converging and actually leading somewhere. And I think that this season, I would probably rate about an 8.2 out of 10. It's a beautiful world. It's generally compelling television. The acting is great. So I'm really looking forward to future seasons. And I'm not gonna lie, part of the reason for making this video is to encourage others to watch it so that I selfishly get to watch more of my favorite book series being brought to life. I hope you enjoyed my breakdown and my little painting. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.